So, what do we got this week? Nikon retired the D300S. There were assaults resulting from a flying a drone. And Tom spent the weekend at Terracon. Let's focus on that. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to the After Chat episode 13. I decided to call it the Tech Movie. Why is that? Because it's computer number 13. Oh, good for you. And we also Friday the 13th coming up this week. Oh yeah. And it was Terracon last week. Oh good. Why did they do it this weekend? I'm really curious. I I am too, but probably because they couldn't get the convention center. Bunk. Yeah, whatever. Um, so before we jump into news for the week. Uh, I do want to kind of jump in and talk a little bit about Terracon because I got to spend the weekend at the Rhode Island Convention Center being a staff photographer. Uh, it, golf clubs. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. It was, it was actually kind of entertaining. I walked around. I put a little pedometer app on my phone, on my Android phone, and it said I walked something ridiculous like nine and a half miles the first day. Because all I did was walk laps around no, the I, whole convention. Yeah, convention, that's all I do at TempleCon, so I, I know. So it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I got, I got a lot of good pictures. I can put them up later this week. I had to promise not to put any of them up before Friday. Not really that hard, because I haven't even looked at them yet. They're all mm -hmm. I downloaded them all, and that's about it. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting time. I wasn't exactly what I expected. It, it was, oh, let me rephrase it. It was exactly what I expected, given the people <laughs> who put it on. But it was... Not exactly what I expected for a horror convention. Like they they were, they they, tr they they advertised the crap out of this, and they talked about how, you know, this is the the premier horror convention. There they were, you know, other than having Kane Holder, who is you know the original. Nobody uh, cares. Yeah, uh, the original Jason. Uh, they really had. Who does everything, by the way? I think he's at Lasergate Friday. Just I yeah, he does, it out he, there. he does everything. He actually is going to, now that I think about that, he is at Lasergate for Friday the 13th, which I think yep. is way better than him being at the convention. Mm. Yeah, but um, they had some really good panels. I did get to sit in and, uh, and shoot the uh, Killer's Corner panel, which was uh, hosted, moderated by Dee Snyder, uh, Twisted Sister, and the House of Hair. And he is actually a really cool guy in person. Like, He's actually really nice to talk to, at least. Maybe that's just a, another stage persona. Maybe he's really a dick. I don't know. But he was nice enough to me when I was talking to him. So. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but that, it, was, it was an interesting time. It was uh, a lot more vendor-based than anything else, which is why I thought it was a little strange. Did you go to around Comic-Con? Uh, the first one. I actually worked the first one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's about, it's probably the composition was probably about the same as the second one then. Yeah, if, if that's it, it was mostly vendors, and a few acts, and a handful of panels, and more vendors, and the people zoom. Yeah, they don't have a ton of content for anything. No, it, it, it was. I mean, there was lots of things to take pictures of because there's a ton of people there. The celebrities are always fun. The acts they do have are really good. So, from a photographic side, it was actually a lot of fun. It was really good. Um, so. That was nice. The, the staff was friendly enough. To, to, yeah, like the actual people who run it, they were actually really friendly to work with. So, uh, pales in comparison to TempleCon. Just gonna say that. You stabbed somebody, so you can. I did stab somebody a couple of years ago at TempleCon, but that was different. I was in the kitchen. But yeah, well, sounds interesting. So yeah, it was a fun time. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna do a second one. They had, didn't announce anything. They didn't even allude to anything. So maybe that maybe this was a one-off, but never know. You never know. So hopefully next summer uh, we'll we'll see some more of that. Yeah. So that that was my weekend in a nutshell. What'd you do? Uh, randomly went to the mountains for a night. That's cool. To get some more dark stars or something. I don't mm. know. It's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. To drive 800 miles in 24 hours, but <laughs> it's yeah, it's it a little fun. crazy. That was fun. It's getting out. Well, that's good. Out in the woods. Out in the woods, huh? All right. You go up to New Hampshire? White Mountains. Awesome. Dolly Cop, other side of the mountains. Nice. I love going up there. Yeah, it was nice. We did that last summer. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, same campsite. <laughs> same site? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good campsite. <laughs> yeah, it was. So. It's like, oh, I'll take that one. That one's, that one's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like that site, especially when we get the two of them next to each other. It's actually a really nice spot. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, so we can get into some news here. Um, the first thing I, I've got here, which we didn't talk about in the bump because I 
I only put three things in the bowl. Um, is Night or Nikon Canon is releasing their own cloud storage solution. Hmm. Shocked and amazed, huh? Nobody cares. Um, apparently, this has actually been out for a while, but it had a name called Project 1709. So no one knew what it, the hell it was, except for the people who were, it was basically like a closed beta. People were invited to it. Um, it. It's interesting though because they're offering you cloud storage. They're offering you the ability to upload raw files, not just Canon raw files, anyone's raw files, mm -hmm. and have them be displayed on the web. They'll they'll do the conversion in the background for JPEG. You can do whole galleries. You can do it's. it's they basically went to a bunch of photographers and said, okay. What's wrong with cloud storage now, and how can we do this better? Hmm. And that's where this came from. So you can put, you know, you get, you, you on, on the free level, you get 10 gigs. Yeah. No, which, I mean, granted, 50. when you're shooting in RAW, that, that's... It's not a lot. But it's not it's a lot, credit but stuff, it's not bad. Yeah. I mean... So 50 gigs for, what, 10 pounds, 5 pounds? 5 pounds, so about 9 bucks. And you go up to 100 gigs for 11 pounds, so 19 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's actually not bad when you consider how much storage... And the fact you can build galleries, you can build collections, you can basically do anything you do on any other photo sharing service, but you can put your full high-res RAW files up there. Yeah, it's very cool. So it, it's different. We'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see how it comes out. I mean, I'm really curious to see what they do with it. Um, obviously, they're initially targeting the UK, but it is open to anyone. You're just going to pay the, conver the, con the conversion to pounds. Hmm. But I think it was Canon Europe that decided to come up with the idea and run with it. So oh, that's interesting, but it's interesting. It'll, it'll be something different. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they make of the cloud service thing. So well, I mean, every, everything is cloud now. Yeah, I mean, I, other than when you're pulling stuff off your camera, you can dump it to a hard drive. But it's, I feel like there's a hole in the sending files arena for photographers because there's not yeah. really like a good definitive solution for that. And I think they were trying to help the photographers with this because you can put up a whole gallery of your raw files or of your edited files and give someone access to download all of them. Yeah. So you're not sending them per se, but you can put them up in a secure spot that someone else can pull them down. So. Yeah, but there's, there's something about sending, especially zip files, that is still mm. really wonky and not ever Never. clean as far as I'm sure I've seen. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the next, the next story. <laughs> This one was funny. I just this saw this today. This is pretty insane. Yeah. So, a woman assaulted a man in Connecticut over flying a quadcopter over a public beach. Yep. So, there's a whole recorded a whole recorded conversation of him. She calls the cops on him and then assaults him shortly thereafter. Calls the cops on him three times, to which the cops pretty much say, when we have some time, we'll send someone down there. Yeah. That's what drove her to assault him because she felt yeah, the cops then, weren't doing enough. Yeah, and then she assaults him and then yells, I'm assaulted, help. Oh, no, he's, he's yelling, I'm assaulted. And then some, she's, she's yelling, get your hands off me while she's punching the crap out of him. Yeah. Um, but he recorded the whole thing. Yeah. This is the best part. He recorded the whole he thing recorded on his the whole phone. Thing from the, and from the air. Apparently. And from the air. Like, he, <laughs> he was able to turn on the video from the quadcopter. And so he recorded the whole thing of her screaming at him, hitting him. But, but when the cops showed up, she jumped and turned to the cops and said, he assaulted me. And <laughs> the cops apparently came up and came right up to him like he w had assaulted her. They believed her. And finally he goes, hey, you want to see the proof? Here's the, from my camera. Here's from my, my drone. You know, and the cops turned it around, arrested her, charged her with assault and, dis and uh, disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace. <laughs> so I yep. thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, there's a quote here from the cop at the end of the article, oh, yeah. the part I underlined there. At the end of it all, one of the officers said to me, basically, flying this thing the way you were is fine if you're not in any trouble. If you're not in any trouble, just you can come back and fly just to be aware that some people might be alarmed. So even the cops know yeah, it's that not, it's legal to fly your drone. Yeah, you get, so to, you're, you're, you get to play with your plane, so it's You fine. get to go play with your plane and fly, fly your quadcopter. And, and so it's like, yeah, you know, but it, it brings up a point. You know, where's that? I mean, it's a public space, so obviously, that that's wide open. You can fly it. There's no no question. Yep. But what do people feel? You know, they do they feel like their privacy is being invaded? They shouldn't expect any if you're laying out on the beach. Yeah. I mean, people are walking around you all the time. But it's this is ridiculous. Pe but people don't people don't grasp that. Like they really they, they don't. They just feel like 
I should be safe everywhere. It's like, well, they know they're not. It's, it's just insane. It's mm -hmm. not. That's so, a bunch of crap. Yep. But I'm, I'm glad, this is one of those times I'm glad the cops were on the right side. Yeah, they wouldn't they, have been. They wouldn't have been without having the, the camera, but the fact that the cop afterwards goes, yeah, no, you're fine to fly this here. I mean, that, that makes me feel a little bit better because that means the local cops aren't going to come after you. The FAA might still come after you, but the local cops aren't but coming after you. If you're not you. flying commercially, it's still recreationally. Yeah, so it's, it's still recreational, so you can't do it. They can't yeah, do can. so, yeah. it. You know, it, yeah. It's it, a bunch it, of fucking crap. It, it is. It's a bunch of crazy shit. Connecticut's. In the Connecticut. Yeah, I've been watching this one, too. The D-800. So, yeah, so Nikon is... So is this the confirmed release date? Is the June 26th? It is as confirmed as you can get right so, now. So no. But, so Nikon, <laughs> Nikon is announcing the D-800. It's been leaked by the most reliable source, according to Nikon. Rumors. Slash D-800E. So D-800 slash D-800D replacement, which will either be the D-800S or the D-810. Yeah, but it's depending on which one it actually ends up being. Um, they're using the word confirmed, which for Nikon rumors is probably it, confirmed. It, it's so on June 26th, you'll see the details for that. They already have some rumored specs, and there's not a... Big leap forward, but still some major improvements, kind of like the D4 to the D4S improvements that people will see. But the price is the improved part. It's more expensive. Yeah, of course. So it's... Well, with Nikon losing money right now, they kind of need it to be a little more expensive. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's a unique SLR. So it, it, no, the D800 is really quite unique, and, and it's, I, I'd love to get my hands on one. Yeah, they're fun. I use them all the time. I shoot video on them occasionally, and I use them for whatever I deem a giant asset to need. I wonder if the 800S will shoot in 4K. No. 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 It's got enough pixels on the sensor. So does yours. So does mine. It's not the pixels in the sensor thing. It's the data handling. It's the refresh rate. It's the yeah, yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah, of other yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. All right. It has enough pixels on the sensor to shoot 8K, but, well, it's not 8K, but it's 6,000 by so what? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous it's amounts of pixels. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun to shoot with, though. So, I combined two articles to give us our next talking point. Because they are very, very related. Yeah, th th these are two related articles I decided we should talk about together rather than knocking it into two pieces that were to be two small articles by themselves. But together, makes a nice, makes a nice little go-to. So, uh, both these cameras are about mm, five years old. The D300S from Nikon and the 7D from Canon. Uh, both of them look like they're getting makeovers before the end of the year, hmm. which is huge on both fronts because, makeovers. It, I, well, they're getting revamped. Um, the, they're both APS-C, they're both crop sensor mm -hmm. cameras, and they're the flagship crop sensors for each brand. I feel like Nikon is strange to be doing that, though. But, go on, I, it's... It's interesting to see them remaking the D300S. Well, yeah, it, but at the same time, they don't have a prosumer... D7000, D7300. It, it's exactly a D600 with a, 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 crop, sensor. With a crop sensor. So but, it is exactly the prosumer crop sensor yeah. camera. Well, they're, they're retired the 300. Yeah. Now, the question is, is it going to be a 400 or is it going to be a 9300? because they've gone to that whole weird naming scheme. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there's also the question on the Canon side, is it going to be the 7D Mark II, which is actually the front-running candidate because they love their marks at Canon. In fact, you know, I, I've said this in the past, when a 6D Mark II comes out, I'll probably cry. Uh, or, the, the, you know, or does Canon go with a whole new naming scheme? Because really, their only other option is to call it an 8D. So it's still the, the prosumer level. They're not going to give it a double-digit number. Yep. Um, or they go to a whole new naming scheme again, which I hope not, because I like it. Probably a 7D Mark II. Um, but either way, both these are supposed to be announced at or by Photokina hmm. and released before the end of the year. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll be interested to see what Nikon does, because they have, they have a, a naming scheme already and an already a body for that, so... The D300S was already out. Of Maybe they're just going to retire it. Yeah, just flat out. Maybe they'll get. They'll just. Like, kill are we it. sure they're releasing another APS-C camera? 
that is only a rumor that they're going to replace it. it. The fact that they've retired it is official, though. It's, re it's, it's gone from the active cameras to the archived cameras on the Nikon yeah, website. Because, but I don't think that, that means they're going to replace it with another camera. It doesn't need to, It's already been replaced. Well, maybe. Be I don't know that they'll... Because, I mean, the 7300 is only six months old, I think. That's true. That could be the replacement for it, and they just put the replacement out first. Yeah. I, well, the 7000 series was, uh, was the replacement for the D300S four years ago, basically. The oh. D300S was... Around the time of my D90, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could see them with another prosumer crop sensor. I guess it's it's strange. It is strange. It's it's a little because weird. I know the 7000 functionally took that spot. Yeah, but on, on the Canon side, the, the big thing is the <clears throat> the pro level dealers got invites to an event to which, which coincides with the same time they're talking about announcing the 7D Mark II. And we already know that the 70 Mark II prototypes with, are in Brazil for the oh, World yeah, Cup. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. And the one leaked report, which the guy didn't put a picture of because he doesn't want to lose his NDA, uh, he said that it has no model number on it. <laughs> like, even in the firmware, like, the EXIF data has no model number. So they don't know what to call it. Like, it doesn't say it's a 70 Mark II or an 8D yeah. or something. It just says Canon EOS. Mm. So... I was like, that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, basically that announcement gets them in to kind of get some information before Photokina when, like, the big release comes out. So, that, it, but, you know, for crop sensors, it looks like it might be a, a good Christmas. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting market. I don't. Yep. Not a market we're in anymore, but it might be a market you guys are in, so. Yeah. So, all right. That's all the news, and you'd think that's the end of the podcast, right? I, I'm hoping it's the end of the podcast, given what I'm reading in the end there. Nope. It's time to play a game. Fuck. So I've got a game here for you. It's a little vocabulary trivia game. Uh, what we are playing for is the comfy chair next week. Uh, I'll have to take a picture of that. Yeah, we have pictures of that. Um, yeah, so we're going to play for the comfy we chair. We have to buy a comfy chair for that. that oh, I'm talking about the leather chair we have. Yeah, the leather chair is It's more nice. comfortable than these. I don't think it's more comfortable than these. Well, then why are we playing for it? I don't know. It is fancier. <laughs> it is fancier. You can call it the okay, fancy well, the chair. The fancy chair. We're playing, to, we're playing to sit in the fancy chair next week. Uh, I have a number of vocabulary terms here. Uh, the first three will not count because I know you know them. This is just to see, show you how the game plays. This is the easy group. The easy group. I'm sure they're all the easy group. No, some of these I was very... All right, mofo. Uh, some of these I did not... You might know them, but I, I did not know some of these. Um, so basically, I'm going to ask you a, a vocabulary question. You're going to tell me what the word means. And uh, let's see, I got one, two, this three, four, five, high tech six, game seven, right eight. Here. Yes, this is my high-tech game. Tell what the word Nine, means. 10, 11. So 11, so we'll see, you got to get... Seven of them, and you get to sit in the chair. You don't get seven of them, I get the fancy chair. Like Fair I said, enough. these first three don't count, though, because I didn't count them in the 11. Okay. But your first word is boca. That weird thing that people say bad ways. Out of focus areas. All right. You're Usually pleasant out of focus areas. Usually. Although you can't have bad boca. All right. Your second one, this is, the, this is still the... It's still, still the, 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 the setup round. Uh, spray and pray. Just taking a bunch of pictures without really looking at what you're getting. With what intention? What do you mean with what intention? With getting something okay. without looking at what you were. Yeah, just go and pray that. Well, the intention works. of taking it in the first place was to get a picture. I hope. <laughs> you know, just like. <laughs> and just to prove that it's not all just photography related, marching ants. In what context? In Photoshop. Marching ants. Oh, yeah, the little outline thingy. Yeah. yeah it shows you your border. Yep. Yeah. All right. So there are it's three. It's a bunch of black and white lines that migrate around your subjects. Your, yeah, you know, your you know, selection like you area like, in Photoshop. Yeah, it's the selection area. So you know, like when you, when you pick something in Windows, like it, it, sometimes it's a box, sometimes it's a filled-in box in Photoshop. It's got, they, they, they walk around like, like the lights on old marquees that used to chase each other. <laughs> Okay, we've got three categories. I'll let you pick which category you want to do first. There is technical, 
old school or guy with camera? I'll go with old school first. You're gonna go with old school. Okay, I thought this was the hardest of the three, but. I was hoping so. Soup. 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 You gotta give me some like context of what the definition of soup is, because I'm gonna say a hot bowl of liquid that has food in it. Remember, this is all photography. I understand. And you, you would be partially right to think of a bowl with liquid in it. I mean, soup as in developing chemical? All right. Yeah, it's... Now, could also be used as a verb in the same aspect, as far as, like, old photographers used to go to their developing guys and say, did you soup that yet? Meaning, did you develop it yet? So, makes... I would have accepted either one. That makes sense. All right. But, yeah. In terms of digital photography role... Digital photography role as the old school category? Yes. Digital photography role. I don't know why they'd ever use that phrase. I don't remember that phrase ever being used. I mean, is it a floppy disk? Because no. that would be hilarious. No, no. It's the number of images you can fit in a SD card of that format? No. Or a nope. Flash of that format? No. Nope. No idea. One roll is equal to 30 pictures. No one has ever known that. References the beginnings of digital photography and photojournalists would turn in their roles because the editors didn't understand digital photography didn't have roles. So they would say, I turned in this many roles even though they turned in digital pictures. And that made sense for the photo editors. Well, that's funny. Yeah. All right, and you're, so, so you got one right and one wrong so far. I was such a small child when that word was used, I would have no idea. I know. So you got one right and you got one wrong. I need beer for this. You're one and one. Yeah, I do too. Yay! You're one and one. You gotta do a little better than 50%. I think you get like 65. That's like passing in grade school, right? Yeah. Middle school. Well, I school. was in grade school when the word roll was used, so. Is that one empty? That one is empty. Okay. Your third and final from the old school category. There's one that you might not even say that I'll have to explain afterward, which yep. is a really great vocab word. Well, you could save it for when you want to challenge me. Or yeah. you could challenge me to a different game. I don't know. Long Tom. Oh. See. I knew this at one point, and I can't remember what it is right now. What's the general idea of it? Um, it, it? It's a rarely used term by anyone other than the old guard of the photography world. A telephoto lens? That is exactly what it means. Yeah, because a long tom is an anti-tank weapon. Yes, it actually is a direct reference to the long tom, a field gun used by the U.S. Army during World War II, but they, you know, that was what they called telephoto lenses. Yeah. So you are two in one. Old people. All right, now you can go with technical. I'll save technical for last. All right, we'll go with guy with camera. The GWC that you often see with people Which talk I about. Which I always refer to as Gawker, because, yeah, you know, that, that sexist. Too. Yep. All right. Hey. <laughs> and go ahead, for, come for, on. For, for, for people who don't know, uh, guy with camera is a derogatory term that people use for basically a guy who thinks he's way better than he is and uses his camera to oh, kind of... No, yeah, you're just kind of sitting in the crowd Yeah, you're just sitting pictures. there like taking pictures. You don't really know what you're doing. And sometimes guys use that. And it's actually, I've seen it on Model Mayhem is they'll like, people will say like, stay away from this guy. He's a GWC. It means he's not actually like a professional photographer. He's just trying to take pictures of naked girls. I haven't seen that as much as I should. <laughs> so, your first one is pixel peeper. Looking really closely at images to see how sharp they are. Close enough. Someone who spends time looking at images at 100% to assess noise and sharpness at full resolution. I'll give you that one. That's Uncle right. Bob. Uh, you should know this one. What? This is guy with camera. Uncle Bob has good camera equipment? No. What is Uncle Bob? You, you giving up on Uncle Bob? Yes, what is Uncle Bob? Uncle Bob is the name that wedding photographers, you, Give to a wedding guest who comes armed with a big DSLR, a big lens, an expensive flash gun, and is used derogatorily. Never done it. Uncle Bob is always getting in my way. Uncle Bob has a goddamn iPad now. Which is even worse. It's much worse. All right. And this one still falls into the guy with, with camera. X-Pro. X-Pro? Yes. Can I just give you the literal definition of what X-Pro means? Sure. Is 
no longer professional? No, that's not what this is talking about. Okay, what is that talking about? The overuse of cross-processing is a, a shortened text speak style abbreviation for the overuse of cross-processing. Well, fuck. I told you this was going to be a little tougher. I found some really obscure X -O. shit. XPRO. Not like EXPRO, but XPRO. Still wouldn't have cared. Yep. I know you don't care, but I get to see. It's just still interesting. One, two, three. You got three right so far. So one, two, three, four. You have four out of the five from the technical group. Four out of you, you, you're not you're not out yet. Yeah, I I don't really pay attention to random crap that people make up, but I should probably know these. <laughs> I scoured long and hard talking to people and reading hey. things on the internet to find <laughs> this for you. This is by no means official, except for the fact that we've been sitting in the nice next week. Um, all right. Having not so, some of these school. will be real easy for you, so I'm sure you'll get to sit in the nice chair. Uh, your first one from the technical group is zoom creep. It's a lens that is too heavy in the front. Oh no, zoom, zoom creep is when you zoom in and it also focus and it also zooms in. There's different parts of zoom creep. No, you were right the first time. Okay. It's it's like there's there's zoom creep and then there's zoom breathing, which right. is the same fucking. People use the terms interchangeably, and I, they so, freak me so out. So go, go with what you were saying the first time. Zoom creep is when the front of the lens is too heavy, and it pulls the whole lens down. Yes. I'll give you that one, because that is where you were going to start with. It's, yeah, there's, is there another word they use for zoom creep? There's just lens creep. Yep. I've heard used more than yep. zoom creep. Yep. I've heard them used interchangeably. All right, donuts. That's, there's what I know of donuts to be. All right. It's the out of focus of a weird lens that no one uses anymore. That is exactly it. It's a, yeah, it's, it's the, the out of focus of a It is the name lens. given to a ring-shaped bokeh created by the unique construction of a refraction lens. That no one uses But yet yeah, you still managed to get it right. Because I had one. It was $20. I know. That's actually why I put it in there, because I, I know you had one. All right. It was $20 for a 500 millimeter <laughs> lens. <laughs> Halos. Halos. So there's halos as in like kind of glary areas, but or there's halos as in a ring around your bokeh. Uh, Is it neither of those? Let's talk more Photoshop than in camera. More Photoshop than in camera. A Photoshop halo? Yeah. Hmm. What would that be? I have no idea. It's the glow that's created when you've over-sharpened and over-edited in Photoshop, usually a JPEG artifact. Never heard that term. I, I've done it by accident to my images and I had to step back. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, I know what you're talking about. I just, I've never yeah. heard that used. Yeah. Huh, cool. So, all right, uh, and you need both of these. Oh, you're, great. You're five. You need, you need both of these to get to seven so you can have the, uh, the, the fancy chair next week. Well, you, you better hope I bet it because I'll be mean when I do this. Because this, <laughs> this one's that I, I've never heard used. <laughs> Well, that's, a, that's just something I wanted to try. I want to try playing games. Um, the Circle of Confusion. Fuck, that's the one I was going to use. <laughs> it's a single point of light, essentially. So it's where a single point of light would hit a film plane. It's the way that I would describe it. The Circle of Confusion is where... I think that's the other definition of it. A single ray of light, basically. Is, it can, it creates a Circle of Confusion on a film plane. What did, what did you have it as? I have the, uh, the area in a photograph, though, though, while not in perfect focus, looks sharp enough to the naked eye to make it look like it's in focus. Hmm. It's basically the edge of where you cross from in to out of focus. That's interesting, because I, I don't think I've ever heard that phrase. Because that's the that. only way I'd ever heard of it. So the way you had it, yeah. I'll have to look what up I would have gotten that, it wrong. I have that crazy. That's one of those, if I'm crazy, I'll give I you can, half credit for that. I could be crazy. I want to look it up, but I won't. And then this is the... This is the granddaddy of them all. You want, you want to bet all your points on this one? Yeah, we should do that. All right, we'll bet all your points. So uh, you had five and a half, so you can go up to 11 if you, you get know this the, right. So here's the best part about this betting all my points thing. When we actually change chairs, it's going to screw up all of your editing. Oh, I know. <laughs> as long as you're aware of that, I'll enjoy it either way. <laughs> Continue. The Scheimpenflug principle. I've heard this. Well, I'm good, because I hadn't heard this before I looked it up. I've heard this. 
The issue is remembering what it means. <laughs> no, what's going to be hard about the editing of all this is I'm actually going to put is overlays this, through the whole game. And it's going to take forever. Is this the one to deal with the sensitivity of film? Having no. limits? No, that's a different one. That's a different one. Nope. No, no, no bets. No bets. I'm out. You're out. What is it? This is the principle that states for perfect focus in the subject plane, the lens plane and the image plane meet along a single axis. Nope. Uh, you know, I've heard that seven, like eight or nine times, and I just forgot that. Yep. And He well, pronounces it, so the person I've heard that from seven or eight times pronounces that way differently. I don't know, I'm bad at German. Yeah. Um, well, he's Italian, so I'm sure <laughs> that it's probably doesn't thing. help. <laughs> yeah, he pronounces that way differently, but yeah, I've I've heard that from people who actually had to deal with that. In, um, and and it's more susceptible in large format photography. It's long for, large format why. photography, and that, that's what he did for a living in the yep. 80s. Yep. All yep. right. Too so bad. You, all your points go away, and you get zero. And you get to deal with the chairs being different. I do. It's gonna be awesome. So next week I get to sit in the fancy chair. All right. All right. So that was my game. I thought it was kind of fun. It was different. It is. It, it, I don't think there are things left to talk about. No, there really aren't. Uh, we'll have to uh, come up with another one. Oh, yeah. We'll, I'm planning on If you don't come up with games, I'm going to come up with games every week. Oh, good. So you, 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 might, you, you might want to um, crash course in Good Mythical Morning and come up with some games. <laughs> Because that's where I got the idea. <laughs> I'm aware. Well, it's a good place to get ideas from. It is. They know what they're doing. Hey, we'll get there eventually. Uh, we should mail them Narragansett cans for the mythical mail. Board. No, I want to mail them Chinese candy because they haven't actually gotten Chinese candy. They've gotten like Korean, Japanese. They haven't gotten. They get Canadian candy in the last one. Canadian candy. They haven't gotten yet. A lot of the stuff I find in Chinatown, they haven't gotten any of that. I don't want to spend the money to ship them a box of candy, but it would be so worth it. I'll, I'll ship it to them. I get the, the discount work. The durian candy has to be like. Oh yeah, we should box. send them some durian candy. It would make them money. Yeah. Yeah, I want to buy them a big package of durian candy. Yes, let's do this. All right, Rhett and Link, we're sending you durian candy. Good luck. All right. Yep. Well, with that being all we have this week, uh, and we don't want to reset the cameras again because we're lazy. Uh huh. You want to do the outro? Or you want me to do it? I have no idea. You, you don't have, you, it's the same thing I've been saying for the last. Like, I know, weeks. and I don't know what it is. The conversation gets better when we all get involved. So oh yeah. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your enemies. An that's an outro now. It's much better than the original one. Oh, it's a good outro. I just forgot that it was not just a sentence you say a lot. It, it, it is not just a sentence I say a lot. I do, I do write it a lot. You know, like every time I post something, I do. I don't say it as much as you think I do. I think. Oh, good. Uh, so yes, please like, comment, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your enemies. I still haven't seen any homeless people. I'm still haven't seen any homeless people subscribing. So, of course, I probably won't see them subscribe. I'm, I'm, this is just occurring to me now that I probably won't actually see them subscribe. I will just see that our subscribe number went up. Yeah, I mean, they're, they already are Wi-Fi hotspots, so they shouldn't have a problem. <laughs> That's only at South by Southwest. Yeah. But that was pretty awesome. That was funny. That was pretty awesome. They, hey. they made them wear shirts that said, I have Wi-Fi, ask me how. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, you're supposed to give them money for their Wi-Fi. Yeah, you're supposed to give them like five bucks, yeah. and they give you the, the Wi-Fi password. And they were, you know, uh, who, who did that? Was it T-Mobile or Sprint? Yeah. I think it was T-Mobile. <laughs> Whoever it was. Basically, was like, gave them a backpack a with a Wi-Fi hotspot and a battery in it and said, here, people want Wi-Fi. You can make some money. This is what we've come to. <laughs> It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> no, I do not throw it at I could just cheat and read this. Yeah, you could, but... Asshole. My battery's almost dead on this.